Welcome, my dear friends. It's great to have you here. Come closer and let's begin today's story. Benny Benjamin, Gloria Caldwell, Soul Marcus. Oh, I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. I once read that over 90% of people, in a large survey, claimed to have uttered the same thing when they crashed their vehicle. This wasn't a multiple choice question. Nope, it was fill in the blank. Now probably wasn't the time to snicker about something like that, but I just joined that majority. It occurred to me that this was the first time I'd ever been the cause of a collision. I'd been struck before but this was different. My face was smashed into the airbag. I wasn't feeling any pain. Two good things. There's a distinctive smell to radiator fluid so no doubt that's been damaged. Brake fluid stinks too and I was smelling it. Surprisingly I wasn't disoriented. This didn't turn out at all how I thought it would. As I sat there pondering things it occurred to me that I really didn't have a clue how I expected it to turn out. Another good thing is that I don't smell gasoline or smoke. My truck was no longer running. Guess I won't be going back to work after all. Deep down I thought my pickup would crunch into the wall sending glass flying. Is that how it went down? Duck no. It was so much more. Not only did my truck crunch into the wall, it continued until it was completely inside. If I could find a mirror I'd know how far I'd gotten into the room. With my face pinned to the airbag I couldn't see a thing. Not quite sure how long it had been, but there was a guy anxiously asking if I was injured. With my lips kissing the airbag, how the hell am I supposed to answer that? The buzz got louder, and then a lady screamed, there's people injured. Oh god. It's bad. Well she sure couldn't be talking about me, and that made me doubly pleased. The sound of sirens filled the airwaves. Fire engines sound different than the paramedics. My guess is one of each is about to be on scene. It was a circus. Triage for the seriously injured. Me. They hooked up a chain and used a winch to extract my truck back into the midday sun. I emerged with a few scratches, bumps, and bruises. A second ambulance was busy loading a gurney. The first ambulance had left a few minutes ago. After being first they stuffed my handcuffed ass into the back of a patrol car. Guess losing control of your truck can still get you in trouble. At least I wasn't an immigrant looking at 110 years in prison. Not sure why they didn't whisk me away. That did give me a chance to survey the damage. My trunk had gone through the wall taking out the door, window, and air conditioner. Didn't look like it had stopped until it had driven the bed and box springs into the bathroom. Room 6 and 10 seemed completely unaffected. Room 8 was out of commission. At least it was a one-story building. My blood really boiled when I spotted Joe hanging around the motel. I'm no rocket scientist, but I was glad I'd broken things up. I declined to talk with the police. The orange jumpsuit wasn't as uncomfortable as I thought it would be. The cop was. Wonder how those poor people from roommate are doing. Like I said, I thought the truck would just blow out the window. Nonetheless, I couldn't stop smiling. Where are my manners? My name is Vince Clancy. 23 years old with a bride of the same age. After high school we screwed around and screwed up. Without a baby bump showing yet Ginny and I married. Two months later Ginny miscarried. Although it bothered me, Ginny took it personally. After six months of counseling we decided to wait a few years before trying again. Her mood swings continue to this day. What the shotgun wedding also did though was derail our plans to go to college. Instead of pursuing a degree I got a job learning how to be an electrician. Ginny started working as a temporary laborer, mostly as a receptionist. Many of her gigs are one day, but sometimes she stays for a week if someone goes on vacation. In high school I played football and didn't embarrass myself. Ginny was one of six basketball cheerleaders. She attended all of my football games and I did likewise for all of her basketball games. While her motive was probably to support me, mine was to keep the wolves away from her. The basketball players and their friends were always doing full court presses trying to pry her away from me. In my heart none ever succeeded. The star player of the basketball team was Joe Clark. He and I weren't friends or even friends of friends. We ran in different circles. That didn't stop him from the occasional double entente suggestions to Ginny. She laughed it off. I tried to not let it bother me which was tough as I'm the jealous type, big time. Whereas I made all-state honorable mention, Joe was just second team all-conference. Those honors go to winning teams and our basketball team sucked. Joe did get a books and meals scholarship to a nearby Division I school, so he left for the campus summer leagues after graduation. Surprisingly, once the season started, he was getting playing time. When not teamed with players who turned the ball over he's a decent player. Joe would always bring back some of his buddies for homecoming and the likes. One of Joe's buddies, Nolan Larson, was the star of his team and an obnoxious a hole. Since his team was in contention for a postseason playoff spot, Nolan was treated like a god. Nolan always hit on Ginny, sometimes even doing it right in front of me knowing she was married. 
Ginny laughed it off. Every once in a while I'd have to step in and make a scene. That just seemed to piss off Ginny. Apparently Joe and Nolan were best buds as Nolan was always with Joe on his return visits to our town. Rather than put up with their shit I usually found a way to make sure we were busy doing something else. Homecoming was just for a weekend, but summer vacations lasted a lot longer. That was a lot tougher, and several arguments ensued between Ginny and myself. Are you my husband or my chaperone? I'm a big girl and can take care of myself. Those guys are just big blowards. Give it a rest. Easier said than done when you're the jealous type. Making things worse was the fact that Ginny had filled out nicely. She drew cat calls when we went line dancing. Proud. Yes. Jealous. Yes. Insane. Didn't think so but now that's up for review. Mr. Clancy, my name is Scott Jensen. I'm your court-appointed attorney from a very young man. Hell, I think he might only be a few years older than me. Clock says it's about two so good afternoon Scott. You can call me Vince. How much do you remember about crashing your truck Vince? Everything. Was this an intentional act on your part? Not really. I just wanted to scare them. Guess I didn't know a truck going that slow could do so much damage. The police report says you were doing about 30 when you struck the motel room. That's not considered slow. When my knuckles turned white and the rage washed over me I may have gunned it, but I didn't intend to bust down the wall. That should count for something. Doubtful. Right now you're facing two counts of vehicular assault. That will likely change if Mr. Larson dies. They might toss an attempted murder too. Ouch, that bad huh? Yeah, you sent that air conditioner hurtling through the room. Caught Mr. Larson square in the lower back. Lots of internal injuries, but the upside is that it may have saved their lives. The impact from the air conditioner sent them tumbling over the bed, moments before your truck pinned them against the wall with the mattress. How's the slot? Your wife. The impact drove Mr. Larson's pelvic area into her fracturing a few of her facial bones. She's lost most of her front teeth, and Mr. Larson has some lasting scars, if you get my drift. Oh, such a pity. Other than that they're relatively untouched. Oh no, far from it. They both got lots of other broken bones. The mattress didn't protect them much when the truck pushed everything into the bathroom tub. Mr. Larson might be paralyzed. I'm trying to shed a tear, Scott, but it's not happening. I understand. How did you know they were in that room? Because after they walked in and closed the door, the number on the door was 8. You're pretty new at this aren't you Scott? A bit flustered now let me rephrase that. How did you know to be there on that day at that time? I was bringing a bouquet of flowers to Ginny, as a surprise anniversary gift. As she had time I was going to ask her out to lunch. She was doing an indefinite gig for someone on maternity leave. As I rounded the corner I saw her standing by the curb outside of her office building. While waiting for the light to turn green a flashy sports car stopped and she got in. I just followed them. So what happened at the motel? Did you confront them? Well their car stopped at the check-in area, and Ginny got out. I was still waiting on the main road for an opening in traffic to make a left-hand turn into the parking lot. The sports car pulled around the building and parked so I followed. Ginny emerged from the office a few minutes later and went to room number 8. He met her about the time she got there. The rest, as they say, is history. So you don't know what they were doing? You really are new at this, aren't you Scott? What? Do you think they were planning a surprise anniversary dinner for me? Sloppy seconds. Vince, I'm here to help you. I can't help you if I don't know all of the facts. How long did you sit in your truck before you attacked them? A couple minutes I guess and then rage clouded my judgment. I lost it. No sugarcoating it. Complete meltdown. Like I said, I just wanted to scare them. Ginny slowly emerged from her lengthy slumber. She scribbled on the notepad the nurse had given her. Where am I? What happened? Mrs. Clancy, you are at Mercy General. You were injured when a truck crashed into your room. You have sustained numerous broken bones and some internal injuries. The doctor has you sedated. If you still feel any pain I can get her to up your meds. How do you feel? Ginny quickly jotted down her next set of questions, like my face is covered with bandages, and my mouth is stuck. Why is my head restrained? I can't move my legs or my other arm. Well your arm and both of your legs are in casts. Matter of fact, you're in a full body cast. And yes, your face is heavily bandaged and your mouth is wired shut. When you're up to it there's a detective that has a few questions for you. Can I call him? Scribbling sure. It was about three hours later. Mrs. Clancy, I'm Detective Green. How's your memory doing? Wearing down the pencil not good I guess. I don't remember being in an accident. The nurse said I was struck by a truck. What do you remember about Tuesday morning? Scribbling slowly you mean this morning. 
Actually today is Friday. You've been here 10 days. I think they had you in a medically induced coma. With the pencil shaking OMG. I put on a somewhat nicer outfit and went to work. What did you do for lunch? With eyes darting back and forth for several seconds, I went to lunch with a friend. Does that friend have a name? Under the bus he went Nolan Larson. And where did you go to lunch? Pencils don't lie, people do I don't remember. Does the Humpday Motel ring a bell? Tears were soaking up the bandages I got a room while Nolan parked. Is that when I got hit by the truck? You should be so lucky. No, you were in the room with Mr. Larson when the truck crashed into your room. More scratching somebody lost control of their truck. Not really. Seems like your little get-together wasn't the anniversary present your husband was expecting. With a shaking cast my anniversary. Oh, God. So this wasn't an activity you'd received prior approval from your husband. Quickly no. That's all I've got for now. Good luck with your recovery. Mr. Larson, can you hear me? The nurse turned to the doctor he hasn't responded since he was informed that he has a broken spine and will never walk again. Sure cut that promising career short didn't it from the surgeon. The nurse shook her head heavy price to pay for getting a little strange from a married woman. My friends and family offered to post bail. When I'm done with this shit show I'm out of here. The death threats for ending Nolan's career aren't worth being a free man until my trial. I'll serve my time and then vamos. Catch me if you can. Ginny visited me about 10 weeks after the event. She arrived in a wheelchair, but used crutches to waddle over to the visitor's room chair. Ginny, you're looking spry. Her voice was flat, I'm sorry that I caused this to happen. Did you really mean to physically hurt me? Nah, just wanted to toss a scare into you and break up your duck fist. How's your throat? Not funny Vince. You have to believe me that I'd never cheated on you before. And you broke it up before it went too far. How did you know? Well I picked up some flowers for our anniversary and was going to surprise you at work. If you wanted out, why didn't you say so? I didn't want out. I don't know why I did it. He was a big star and I fell for his line of BS. You know he's a paraplegic now don't you? Yeah, I've been told that. Maybe you should sign him up for the Special Olympics. You two would make a good couple in the modified potato sack race. I guess I deserve that. I just wanted to tell you I'm sorry about everything. I hope your trial goes well. Seems like you had a lot planned that afternoon. While sitting in the squad car I saw Joe Clark poking his head around. How do you know you were going to be there? Oh god. I'm so sorry Vince as the floodgates of tears opened. Truth be told, I wasn't jealous anymore. When my love for Ginny died it no longer mattered to me what she did or who she did it with. It made me mad at myself for being so gullible. Hey, if you can find where they towed my truck, the flowers I bought for you for our anniversary are probably still in the front seat somewhere. Heard you took a bite out of the big star. How was it? Ginny didn't respond. She flipped me off, got up, and hobbled back to her wheelchair. It's always nice to get visitors. It lifts your spirits. The weeks melted away as my trial approached. I declined all offers for bail. With the trial a few days away I agreed to a plea deal. A year behind bars seemed better than the big numbers I was facing, if they convinced the jury of the attempted murder charge. When the basketball team lost I got hate mail. When they missed the playoffs I got death threats. It's a ducking game people. One of Scott's associates filed a petition for divorce for me. It was pending with everyone having signed off on everything. I'd be single before long. My attorney showed up unexpectedly Scott, long time no see. How's my future looking? Well the DA is offering time spent in two years on parole. Scott, tell him I want to leave the state as soon as I'm out. With the continued death threats parole won't work. Show him these letters. See what you can work out with him. The next week I was transferred to a processing center to finish the rest of my newly reduced sentence for the class 5 felony that I'd pled guilty to. I'd be out in a few weeks and out of state the same day. With my assets depleted, a convicted felon, and no hope of a decent credit rating for years to come, things seemed bleak. Ginny visited again a few days before my scheduled release. She was walking relatively normally with just a hint of a limp. What brings you around Ginny? We're divorced now. My last visit didn't go as well as hoped. I wanted to apologize again. You wouldn't be here if I hadn't been there. Well Ginny, I'm locked up because I couldn't control my anger. That much is on me. Period. I don't deny that I was out of control. I could have just driven off and filed for divorce or disappeared. I'm serving time because of what I did. Not going to blame anyone else. Still, you were mad because of what I was doing. Do you like my new teeth? As cute as ever. How's your boyfriend's? No need to get nasty. 
I try to ignore any story or gossip about them. If I had a wish which I knew would be granted I'd wish you would have arrived with your flowers 10 minutes earlier. We'd still be together and I wouldn't have made the worst mistake in my life. Touching Ginny but whatever deity you're praying to must not be granting wishes. Where are you working at? Got a full-time job as a receptionist for stone masonry. Same daily grind. No husband to go home to. All my fault. What are your plans when you get released? Headed out of state. Still get hate mail weekly for ruining Nolan's career. Probably try to live under the radar for a few years. Any room in your plans for a soil dove? We'll answer this. Why did you throw us away? I wish I could give you an answer that made sense, but I don't think I can. And that's why at this point I just want out and to get away, alone. But thanks for the offer. Thinking of the good times we had helped me make it through this ordeal. Well if you change your mind, you know where I work. You'll always be welcome in my arms. You're right. Until the next time. Thanks but no thanks. Ginny's tears weaved slowly down her face. The van ride to the downtown bus terminal was on a gloomy day. The streets were dry, but the sidewalks were still moist. It matched my soul completely. I used my bus fare to head to the city my parents lived in. They'd arranged for an old truck for me to have and a few hundred bucks to help out. They live on a tight budget so it was very generous of them. My money ran out three days and two states later. There were plenty of odd jobs, but they didn't pay enough to eat and sleep. My clunker took me further down the road. Begging on street corners gave me enough money to buy a cheap phone. All I really wanted was to search for jobs on the internet. It worked. I found a construction fly-by night outfit that needed an electrician. Cash paid daily. Although I made friends, I was no longer that outgoing person I'd been before. A cheap weekly motel room was my current abode. The lady in the end unit was turning tricks, which actually had some appeal to me. Let me clarify that. I wasn't interested in turning tricks, but maybe using her services, but money was too tight. She caught me staring one evening and opened her robe a little, you ready for a go? Only if you take IOUs. Laughing let me think about it. No. Doubt you need an electrician so I've got nothing to barter with. Pity. You look pretty chiseled. I like a man who can pin me down. I'll keep that in mind when my ship comes in. Hey one of my clients did mention a project that required some sparks flying. Can't talk right now as I've got to get cleaned up before my next appointment. I chuckled. We're just nameless people trying to make it through the night. Sleep was tough as I imagined pinning her down. Shy, I, I need to get laid. It was a few days later when I saw the escort again. She handed me a piece of paper. I told my client that I knew an electrician. Here's the number. Thanks. You didn't need to do that. I know. Catch you later as she got in her modern sedan and drove away. I had to ask the guys I worked with what they charged for odd jobs. With that little bit of knowledge tucked away I called the number. A lady answered which took me by surprise. Shy. I don't want this lady to find out her old man was with a hooker. Um, yeah, hi. Uh, I was given your number from an acquaintance. I heard that you need an electrician. Yeah, what's your price and availability? Well I work Monday through Friday until about 6. If it's a small job I could do it at night. If not small then Saturday and Sunday. By the day is cheaper than by the hour, and then hope she wouldn't hang up as I quoted hourly and daily rates. We exchanged names. Hers was Deb, and I got an address. Saturday morning I'd drop by and take a look. When Saturday arrived I was surprised to find it in a gated community. After confirming I was expected I went through the subdivision to her address. Only one car in the garage so the mister must be golfing or something. Deb was about my mother's age and not wearing any rings. Things weren't adding up. She needed the ground fault outlet in the master bath replaced and wanted to turn some light switches into the motion detecting type. There were pictures of young adults on her wall, but none of the pictures had a father-like figure. There was only one pillow on her bed. I was beginning to think there wasn't a mister. I gave Deb a figure and she paid me up front to go get the materials. After a quick trip to Lowe's I was finished well before lunch. Deb brought me a soda and tray of cookies while I was working. So which of my friends told you I needed an electrician? I froze. What am I supposed to say? Oh, a hacker at the sleazy motel I'm living at learned I was an electrician. Don't know her name. She overheard me talking about being an electrician and we chatted for a few minutes. Strawberry blonde around 5'5". Five five. Oh, okay. I've got some friends that might want your services. Mind if I pass your name along? That would be awesome. I'm way short of money right now. What other talents do you have? Was spoken with a twinkle in her eye. Now I was confused. She's friends with a hooker or actually a lesbian, and I swear she's flirting with me. 
and I turned to blush. My response got a chuckle from Deb as I attempted to flirt back, I'm young and not afraid to work up a sweat. I'll let them know as Deb smiled. My imagination wanted more, but I stuffed her cash into my jeans and drove away. It wasn't 10 minutes later when I got a call from an unknown number. This is Vince. Hey, glad I caught you. Deb just gave me your number. I live two doors down from her. Can you stop by? From a female. Yeah, I'm just grabbing a bite to eat. What's your address? After memorizing her address I finished my sandwich and headed over. It took a little while to get past the security checkpoint as I didn't know her name, just an address. Eventually I was let in. There were two cars in the garage with both garage doors open. I parked on the street. My clunker was easily the junkiest vehicle in this neighborhood, without a doubt. With a timid knock on her door I was greeted by a very cute, but young, lady. Um, you called about an odd job. She rolled her eyes mom. It's for you. She turned tail, a nice tail I might add, and left me standing there. When the lady arrived I could tell the similarity. You must be Vince. Is replacing ceiling fans something that you do? How about motion detecting light switches? Oh yeah, I need more outlets in the garage. Yes, 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 and yes. Did I answer all? With a white smile come this way then. After jotting down all the she wanted done I posed the question, have you bought what you want installed? By the way, should I just call you mom of rolling eyes daughter? That made her chuckle Nancy. That's Shaleen, she's waiting for her boyfriend and getting very annoyed. Sorry about that. No, I haven't bought anything. We can go down to the Lowe's and shop if you'd like. Wait, what's it going to cost to install these things? I jotted down my rough estimates and handed her the piece of paper. Well, let's go. Do you want to drive? Sure. Well, that lasted until she saw my junker. Oh, I'll drive. We can fit things in my trunk and back seat. Well, if you insist. Haven't ridden in wheels as nice as yours in a long time, if ever. It took me until the sun went down to finish her projects. Jolene kept an eye on me as she fumed about being stood up by her boyfriend. Between the two jobs I'd made close to a thousand after the tips added to my quotes. If you've never lived on the cash in your pocket, day in and day out, you can begin to understand the fear of being robbed when you come into a little cash. I didn't sleep worth a crap, suspecting that everyone could tell, just by looking at me, that I had a grand in my pockets. First stop Monday was going to be to open a checking account and get a debit card. With money in the bank I ventured out on Monday night. As much as the thought of paying the escort for sex revved my engines, I just couldn't take the plunge. Instead I went to the local watering hole and pulled up a stool at the bar. I wasn't looking, but there were some ladies there that were. You gonna stare at your b-roll night. Some of us ladies dress to impress and you're not even looking our way as I looked up to see a nice looking lady. I made a production of looking her up and down, yeah, you do look mighty fine. She must have been expecting more out of me. After a bit of a pause that's it. Not going to ask me to dance. Not going to buy me a drink. Nah, you're on the prowl. I thought I'd let you take the lead. With a roll of her eyes she turned away and went back to her friends. I suspect I was vilified as she explained what an ass I'd been. I just came in to have a drink and feel sorry for myself. Can't a guy do that without being hit on? Well it was about 30 minutes later when the only one not dancing strolled over and sat down next to me. You ain't looking the guys over so I'm guessing you got women problems. Nope, not anymore. So what's your kick? It's taking time for me to learn how to live again. Wanna talk about it? Not really. I'm enjoying my beer and the view. What's your kick? Me and my friends like to come in to drink and dance. You guys all think you're gonna get lucky, but that's not why we're here. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of gals who come in looking for some excitement. Marry ones too if you like a little risk in the equation. Who thunk in a little town like this that such activities went on at night. We don't consider ourselves a little town, so you must be one of them big city slickers. Yeah, I guess so. Never got into the nightclub scene. Why is that? You ain't half bad to look at. Got married early. Money was tight so nights out were to parties at friends' houses or to a movie. Didn't work out I take it because I don't see no ring halo. Bingo. Well I came here to dance and if you're not going to ask me I'll catch up with you later. Ashley's my name. I'm Vince. Nice chatting with you Ashley. I'm getting really good at making women roll their eyes and shake their heads in disbelief. As I lay in bed that night I realized it wasn't sex that I desired, it was companionship. Simply talking with Ashley had lifted my spirits. I became somewhat of a regular at the watering hole eating dinner, if you can call it that, almost every evening. Not looking to hook up but simply talk. The next time Ashley and crew came in I asked her to dance. 
Although invited to sit at their table, I declined. Conflicting emotions had me wondering which way was up. I received another referral call from the work I had done for Deb. This lady's address was in a different part of town. My Saturday morning was now booked. The following Friday night I was sitting in my bar still eating a pickle, hard-boiled egg, and pretzel mix when I felt a tap on my shoulder. Looking up into the mirror I saw her standing there. Hey Ashley, where's your posse? Watering the horses. Grab your dinner and join me at a table as she turned and walked away. That sounded more like an order than a request, so I followed orders. Can I buy you a drink? As I sat down. No thanks. I know money is tight for you so I'll buy my own. And how do you know about my money situation? Well, let's see. How you dress, what you drive, what you eat, should I go on? Busted. I live a simple life now. Let's get to know each other. I'm college educated and have a job at the warehouse distribution center where I'm hardly getting to use my education. My choice was to move away or make do here until something or someone came along. I'm not married. Never been. No steady boyfriend. You turn. I knocked up my high school sweetheart and never got to go to college. We married quickly and then she miscarried. Caught her going into a motel and drove my truck into the same motel room. Spent some time in prison as the guy is now paraplegic. Got divorced while serving time. For real. I fiddled on my phone searching for the story on the internet, and then handed the phone over for her to read. It took a minute before she handed the phone back. So, still want to get to know each other? I asked as she studied my face. Must have been a shock to your system. You think? Believe it or not I never intended to hurt them. In the eyes of the law that meant nothing. My heart became ice cold sitting in that prison cell. Been out for about a month now. Looks can be deceiving. Anything else I should know about you? I do electrical work for a guy that pays me cash. Recently I started doing electrical odd jobs on the weekends for some extra cash. Never been in trouble with the law, I mean other than putting tire tracks on the X. Nope, not even a traffic ticket. I snapped that day and paid a heavy price. How much are you planning on spending here tonight? About 20, why? Let's go to the thrift store and buy you some decent clothes. The devil and angel on my shoulders were fighting fiercely. Woman. Trouble. Woman. Trouble. I accepted her offer. She drove. Why are you doing this? Because you won't do it for yourself. You're much too young, your life's just begun, and it's time to move on. And what's in it for you? If I still think you're a nice guy I might ask you to take me out. Well I spent 30 that night but got several shirts and a couple of pairs of pants. Ashley drove me back to my car. As I got out thank you Ashley. Can I take you out sometime? Thought you'd never ask. Wear one of your new outfits and meet me at the movie theater in the mall tomorrow night at 6. It was a toss and turn kind of night. As it was becoming my norm, I did an odd job Saturday morning. I had almost 1600 in the bank, but kept 50 out to pay for this evening. I was ready to go at 4pm, but realized I looked dorky wearing the only pair of shoes I owned. They didn't go well with my upgrade in jeans. So, back to the thrift store I went and found a decent pair for under 10 bucks. What I thought was a date turned out to be a double date. Ashley met me with her friend and date. When you're a convicted felon I guess you shouldn't be surprised when people want to protect themselves. Still, the movie and drinks afterwards were nice. I found myself excluded from most of the conversations as they had their college memories, and I couldn't for later add to the discussion. Ashley never picked up on my uneasiness. Although I enjoyed the peck on the lips, I relished the hug. That's what I'd been missing the most. I handed Ashley a slip of paper with a short note and my phone number on it. You have my number. I don't have yours. Call me if I haven't scared your way. She whispered I will as she tucked the paper into her cleavage. I was pretty pleased with how things were going, but it didn't last. On Tuesday night I was filling my truck with gas when I saw Ashley arm in arm with a guy heading into the restaurant nearby. We had only been together platonically and I couldn't handle it, emotionally. Everything came rushing back. The rage, the heartache, and the helpless hurt feelings. Just when I had convinced myself that Ginny couldn't hurt me anymore, her memory stabbed me again. My fight or flight instincts kicked in, and I decided that the grass had to be greener elsewhere. I wasn't ready for any kind of relationship. It wasn't Ashley's fault. Since my motel room was paid up through Friday, I had a few days to decide which direction to point my steering wheel. My decision was made easy when the guy I was working for said he knew somebody who needed an electrician. By Friday morning I was on the road with 500 miles to go. Without thinking I answered my cell as I was driving. Hey Vince, where you been? I took a job in a different city. You never called so I couldn't let you know I was leaving.
thanks for helping me out of my art. When are you coming back? I don't think I am, but I'll put you in my contacts list just in case our paths cross again. Her voice sounded sad, maybe her guess I should have called sooner. No biggie. I enjoyed our brief time together. A few more minutes of reminiscing and my time with Ashley was over. Although my parents wanted me to visit on the holidays, they understood why that wasn't the best thing for me to do for the next few years. Sooner or later another star basketball player would appear, and all thoughts of Nolan would fade into the footnotes of history. I dated a few ladies and even went to a swap party with one of them. I loved the variety of sex, but it killed any thoughts of spending more time with that one. When you've been relegated to somebody's ticket to the party it tends to demoralize you. Cold fish. That's what one date told me. My heart was safely tucked away. The best way to keep your horse undefeated is to leave it in the barn. Same held true for my heart. You can't hurt it if it never sees the light of day. It was three years before I returned home to visit with my parents. Things were going so well that I could afford to fly. The basketball team had made the playoffs so it was a lot safer for me. Nobody mentioned Ginny which I appreciated. The return flight was uneventful. I even chatted with a lady about my age on the airplane. No names or phone numbers exchanged. My name is Heather. I work in the cafeteria in a large office building downtown just off of Broadway. I'm single as Mr. Wright hasn't crossed paths with me yet. I'm intrigued by a loner who eats here every day. He always puts a piece of cherry pie on his tray. His name tag says Vince. He works for the investment bank, but he doesn't dress like a banker. There's just something about him that is me intrigued. Since Vince wasn't wearing rings I thought I'd take a chance. One day, as he was putting his tray up, I told my boss that I needed to use the restroom. Instead I waited for Vince and when he approached I simply handed him a note which read call me sometime. Heather in my phone number. I smiled. He smiled and just nodded yes. We met for dinner a few nights later. Nothing fancy, just a cafe near where I lived. It was an eye-opener. Vince opened up about how he worked as an electrician and handyman for the investment firm. The shocker was that he was a convicted felon. He pulled up the article about it on his phone. Vince, this happened four years ago. Do you miss her? No. Not at all really. So how is it that a good-looking guy like you doesn't even have a girlfriend? Risk versus reward. If I put my heart out there and it all goes wrong again will I snap? So it's a trust thing. I guess so. If my trust in a girl is misplaced do I trust myself to handle it gracefully? Last time I ventured out, even though we never even kissed, I saw her with another guy, and all the pain came rushing back. When was that? Three years ago. I've kept my distance from relationships ever since. Okay. I think I get it. We'll take it slowly, but only if you promise to ask before acting. I don't want things to blow up because one of us assumed something that just wasn't true. What if I still don't want a relationship? Then we won't meet here tomorrow for dinner and then a movie down the street afterwards. I could see the want too in his eyes. He slid his hand across the table and I put mine over his. Vince looked at me for a few minutes, then softly see you tomorrow. Butterflies banged around inside me as Vince silently left the cafe. He might be Mr. Wright. Epilogue. Was it easy? Far from it. I'm now going and Vince needed reassurance that I was his and only his. He loves cuddling about as much as sex. I can read a book sitting in his lap while he watches sports. Once we became intimate Vince became extremely possessive. It was tough sledding, but we survived. Knowing why he's the way he has made it easier for me to accept it. We've been married for 10 years now. I've turned down all requests to dance from everyone except his father at our wedding. I don't do any girls nights out and make sure to invite Vince to join me when I go shopping with my friends. We have a 6 year old daughter and a 3 year old son. In between those two I miscarried and we needed counseling. The counselor and I convinced Vince to take extra sessions. He's damaged goods, but he's mine. I don't think I could ever find a man as loving as Vince. I know why he's damaged and every day I look in the mirror and remind myself to never give him a reason to doubt my love. And that's it for today's story. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any stories only here on Revealed Truth.